Hello, Booktube. Hello, everybody. This is our first real video since we came back. Yeah, kind of. Sort of. She, uh, no, I did one by myself. I, I did one by myself. Well, but together. And we did one, uh, we did a live. But yeah, live, this is yeah, the first it's... recorded video we've done together then you since we came it. back. So what we're doing is, as I'm sure you've already read, um, is our... These dogs is so you you might hear that a while. That's um that's Albert barking at Link and they're out there playing, and here comes Link running in the house. He decided so, he didn't want to do that anymore. Yeah, um, <clears throat> so what we're doing is we are we're going to review the last three books we read and tell you what we're reading right now. Yeah, yeah, sounds good to me. Uh, and then we are going to use uh, starred ratings, much to the chagrin of Steve Donahue. So. Sorry, Steve. We, we, we We're can, doing it anyway. We can give it five narwhals. Narwhals? Yeah. I have narwhals on the brain. Don't, don't touch me. <laughs> five Christmas trees. Well, well we, we could do that pretentious thing where we give it, like, uh, you you could give it, like, five things up. Five things up? <laughs> when, when you're talking about... It's uh, very appropriate for the things I read, but anyway. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a... Uh, that that was a uh, married with children joke. It's just descended into uh, potty humor. I don't know how it happened. <laughs> okay. All right. So so yeah, that that's what we're doing. We're gonna do one at a time. Each of us gonna do one at a time, mm -hmm. and um, tell you what we thought of the book, and we're gonna review it a little bit. I, think, I suck at reviewing mm -hmm. stuff, so this I'll, I'll do my best. But the last one we actually read together. We'll, we'll talk about that last. Yeah, I was thinking I, I could give it. I could give it five love letters, up or down. But then I thought the last one wouldn't work. Actually, it's pretentious. I think it's funny. I it don't. is pretentious. Yeah, You're that's... right. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing it. <laughs> anyway, you you start. Why well, I got to go read? first? Yeah. All right. So. Because <clears throat> I wanted to. I'm I'm still on my romance kick. I've been enjoying my romances, even though I did we read one uh, this week that was not romance. Be proud of me. I am. Uh, but the first one I read, I'm going to show you a picture. It was called "Truly Mine." It's by Nicole Rose. It's a come on you. Kindle you can Unlimited. Sort of right? see it. <clears throat> yeah, it's a Kindle Unlimited book. Um, it's one of those independently uh, published books i enjoyed it immensely it's fluffy it's cute it's about a uh a girl late 20s who is well she's she's taking care of her great aunts and they're both in their mid 80s and they're both hell on wheels they uh they get into so much trouble these two do they don't have a driver's license between them but they they get up in the middle of the like middle of the night and go on road trips Without telling her. And she's constantly trying to put fires out because of them. And it's not because... it's They're not malicious. They're, they're just a little dotty. And between that and taking care of them and working to keep, the, to keep their house and to keep the bills paid. She's got no time for herself at all. Um, she absolutely has no time for relationships. But she, uh, she just threw... Through her work, through where she works, she comes into contact with a um, a security guard. Well, he's not a security guard. He's a he's a security guy. He's like a professional body bodyguard, and he decides he is going to marry her from day one and and make sure it happens. But what I really like about it is he he is constantly pursuing her, even though she's telling him, "Nope, can't do it. I'm sorry, I don't have time." Um, but he goes to great lengths. The character does to make sure that. He's not going overboard to make sure that he hasn't entered into stalker territory. Um, and consent is a wonderful thing. And communication is a wonderful thing. And there's loads of it in this book. I had a great time with it. I give it... Stars. <laughs> you have four things up. <laughs> no, it's not that kind of book. <laughs> what it's kind sweet, is? It's a sweet romance. It's a sweet romance, but it's still spicy. Oh, okay. It doesn't. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be like uh, dark and gritty to be spicy. It's still sweet as it can be, even though it's spicy. Okay. All right. <laughs> Four stars, right? Four stars. All right. 
so it's my turn. And the first thing I read, I actually read this with Bill from Bill's Books. That's a great what? cover. Yeah, it is, isn't it? That's, um, uh, that, who, who drew this? Not, not Vallejo, the other really popular, uh, fantasy artist. And I, I cannot remember his name. Oh, my, uh, Michael Whalen. Oh, okay. Did, did this one. And Michael Whalen is just great artist. We were talking about him the other day, weren't we? Michael Whalen. No, we were talking about Boris Vallejo, actually. Oh. Yeah. Darn it. But that's the other one. I mean, yeah. it's fine. And this is just some great art. And I read this with Bill from Bill's Books. Bill's got a great channel. We, uh, um, I, I watch every one of his videos and really enjoy them. He's got a great science fiction collection. <laughs> Bill does. And a great science fiction magazine collection. Um, but yeah, it's, well. It'll catch up. Just give it wow, a second. Wow, I can't see it. There, there we go. go. <laughs> it's Foreigner by uh, C.J. Cherry. And this is, um, I believe this is my first C.J. Cherry book. And it, it is the go. first book of the Foreigner series. And um, this book is about a politician who, well, actually, no, let, let's start. This, this group of people crash land on this planet. Um, and then it skips to a whole bunch of years later. And... Um, this these people have settled on this planet. The humans have settled on this planet with these um, aliens here, and um, and this uh, <clears throat> this guy who's a human politician actually, jeez, his dogs. This human politician um, is the victim of of an, of an attempted assassination. So they take him and they put him out into the lot like getting into a desert air a deserted area with this um other politician's family member who is a member of this alien race like i said i'm terrible at talking about these books but and then it takes a break for about 50 pages or 60 pages for politics um and then we get about 20 pages and then we get about 20 pages of really interesting stuff and then we get about another 50 or 60 pages of politics. Um, hold on. Have to save the puppies. Yeah, she's got to save the puppies. Well, I just tell them what's for. Hey, and, excuse me. Um, and so the book ends <laughs> up, yeah, and so the book ends up being just over mediocre because the last third of the book is great. It's, it's excellent. Uh -huh. I mean, I, um, Thank you. you know, somebody like James M. Cain would be would be jealous of some of the of some of the great interviews that she writes and some of the great um, uh, just almost like pulpy um, suspense stuff. It's, it's Ricardo Montalban being protected by the Barbarian Twins. Yeah, but it is very good. Um, I, well, no, let me take it back. It's good. It's it's fine. It's a three star book. That, that, that's all I can do. Um, do I, it's 60 pages of politics. If you enjoy planet politics, um, things like that in your science fiction, then I say go for it. I think you will love it. She writes it very well, but she does not write it ex in, in an exciting way. It actually slows way down in way too many in way too many spots for me. It, it's almost like it's almost it reminds me in a way of of some of the romance books that I've read, in that you get this great story going on. And then they take about 20 pages off for, like, what they call romance. That's not romance. And, and it's, a, it's the same thing here, except the politics are just incredibly, in my opinion, boring. And I don't know if anybody else has read C.J. Cherry and has had this problem. Let me know. Um, like I said, I didn't hate it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to read the book, too, because I'm, I'm hoping she got that out of her system with the first book. There's... 20 books in this series. So I'm oh hoping Lord. she got the yeah that stuff out of, out of her system with the first book. But we're going to find out. This is a very well thought of book, and I, I didn't care for it. I mean, I thought it was just okay. I mean, Three if every book is like 60 pages of politics, that's like, what, 1,200 pages of politics? No, no, this is 60 pages of politics and then 20 pages of good stuff. It's, it's an almost 400-page book. Oh, yeah, 60 pages of politics, 20 to 25 pages of, <laughs> of really good, interesting stuff, then another 50 or 60 pages of politics. Like, and it did that like four times in the book. 
kind of reminds so, me of House of Leaves. The yeah. really good stuff is about that big, and the rest of it's like... Yeah, a third of the book is very good. Uh, the rest of the book, I, I was bored with. So, yep. Your next one? Uh, the next one I read was uh, called... Well, it was The Curse by Heather Graham. It's number 13 it? oh. in the series. It'll catch up eventually. I just know it. There we go. Um, yeah, it's the Crew of Hunters book, or series. Um, this is number thir 13, I think. It's 13 or 14. I never can remember. Um, I love this series of books. It's about a, uh, a, a special special unit in the FBI. They're, they're paranormal uh, inclined people. They can all see ghosts, talk to ghosts, things like that. And they use those talents to solve difficult uh, cases. Um, that's great. It's a fantastic premise. I'm getting kind of irritated because every they, they kind of follow a, um, a, a a pattern. What's the, what's the word? Formula. formula. They kind of follow a formula. It's this uh, the the male lead meets the female lead, and they hate each other on sight for some unknown reason. There's never any real reason. The, the characters even even say to themselves... You hear these dogs? I tuned it out. I didn't even notice it was happening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you all hear this. Bron Bronny? <clears throat> Bronwyn. Maybe. Bronwyn's <laughs> okay. Let her go. Anyway. Oh, here she comes. Uh, anyway, there's... They hate each other on sight for some reason, and they don't know why. There's no reason why. The characters even say, or even think... Why am I like this? <laughs> There's, this guy says, why do I act like this around her? I don't understand. It's because I don't know either. You know, and Becky and I have talked, like, talked about this. We don't, know what, we don't know what causes this. We don't know if it's because the writer gets in a funk. Whether this is because everyone seems to love it. Or whether this is because the publisher says this is what we want. And this is what you got to do. Maybe she's writing for her audience. Um, because I think it's... Lordy, Ronwin, baby. Um, but I think there's, I, like, there's been maybe one where the character's like, yeah, I kind of like you. We'll, we'll get along just fine. And then the, uh, the other 12 or 13 that I've read are like, yeah, no, I hate them on sight. But then they gr sort, I say gradually, but sort of grad gradually start to get along until all of a sudden they're thick as thieves. Um... One thing I do really, really like about the series is they don't, they don't like tie it up with in perfect little bows. Remember, these are these are FBI agents and they're a special unit, so they're called all over the country and they're based in Virginia. Right. So they, we end up with long distance relationships and some people move um, to Virginia, some some um, don't, and I I actually really appreciate that. Um, it it. It, it kind of keeps you guessing, but yeah, I, I actually I really like I really like the book, and they're all they're uh, three and a half to four stars. I I can't really give you. I mean, they're they're better than three stars. I just don't know if they're quite as, as good as four stars. Right. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that that the the formula thing, they're very very formulaic. But they're still going. There's like 30 books in the series. So I keep hoping maybe she kind of draws away from that formula at some point. Right. And um, branches out into something else. Um, but you never know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm reading the, the... I'm halfway through the next book after that one. and Same thing? Same thing. Yeah, we'll talk about that next week. Yeah. So my next one we'll probably talk um, about a couple of them. is another science fiction book. That's that's mostly what I've been reading. Um, is Midnight at the Well of Souls. Well, there we go. Midnight at the Well of Souls by Jack L. Chalker. Is that a centaur? Yeah. This is a um, really interesting book. It's a space centaur. This is one of the... Th this is very imaginative. Um, I'm not going to try to explain it. But because mm -hmm. number one, I, I don't want to spoil anything um, because you you can spoil this book. Um, that is a great title. It has a, it has a bit of a it has a bit of a shocking ending, 
Um, and it has a lot of moving parts, but they never. But it, it's never hard to read. It's never hard to understand. It's never hard to keep keep up with. Um, I, I think Jack Chalker did a great job. Now, one of the things I will say about the book is it has some really weird gender things in it. Um, I'm not smart enough to real to know whether he he did it well or not. I am smart enough to know that I think it would offend some people, and some people would be very impressed um, with what with what he did. What do you mean, gender things? Um, a, like, like there, there's this one part where a woman says, "If if I could live another life, I'd like to live it as a man." Okay. I, there's not a woman alive who hasn't thought that. <laughs> yeah, but 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 the way that it is brought into being is very strange. I got you. Uh, although... And I know a lot of women would, would really, really uh, bristle at a guy writing that. And, but, I but think I think Jack Chalker was trying to be sensitive with it. But this book was written either in the 70s or the 80s. He didn't quite, he didn't quite land it. So it's not perfect in the way that he did it. But the book, at the very least, is incredibly interesting. And it's actually one of my favorite science fiction reads of the last couple of years. I love this a lot. I really thought it was great. Um, I almost want to give it a perfect rating, but I'm not going to. I'm here for Space Centaurs. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it almost seems like science fantasy for a while. And then it doesn't. And then it's very, very science fiction after a little while. So, okay. uh, yeah, it's it's excellent. Uh yeah, this is this book has, and this author has um, good reviews for a reason. So I'm going to give it a four. Um, it's, High praise from you. Yeah, uh, it isn't perfect. I mean, it's got some, it's got some very, some just some very weird things in it that, that don't quite land, and not ju not just the gender part of it. It's got other things that that just don't don't quite hit. Um, and I think it's because of the time time frame it was written, and in the in the decade in which I'm reading it. But, yeah, this is highly recommended to just about any science fiction fan. Yeah. Midnight at the Well of Souls. All the books that we talk about are going to be in the description. So, if you if you want to look at them and everything. And I might... No, I'm probably not going to. I was going to say I'm, I might link them. <clears throat> no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm too lazy for that. Your, your turn. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the last book is actually one that we both read uh, yeah. this week. And it's one that, it, it, it's sort of been on my, my list of shame. We were talking about it on the live the other day, uh, yesterday with Greg um, and Alan. Yeah, yeah we, we did a live with uh, um, Greg at, on another Bibliophile Reads and Alan from Big Hard Books and Classics. We did, we did a live with them last night. Yeah, we were talking about it yesterday, and it's, it's one of those books that everybody at some point, a lot of people at some point think, yeah, I think I've read that. It sounds really familiar, but a lot of people haven't. They've seen the movie. I, yeah. Well, I was one of those people. I'm like, yeah, I think I've read that. But then I started it, and I'm like, no, I haven't. Well, I, I'm, I'm actually the opposite. I was like, I don't think I've ever read that. And, <laughs> yeah, and, then, I, and then I realized I'd read it like 30 or 40 years ago, or 30 to 35 years ago, like somewhere between the ages of 13 and 17. I, I did read it. Right. Um, and it's Something Wicked This Way Comes. We, we both read this. Yeah. So. Yeah, they're saying that title is a, a line from Shakespeare's Macbeth. Yep. Um, by the pricking of my thumb, something, something wicked this way comes. Not, I like that. Yeah. I, it was really funny. I I listened to it on audiobook. Um, cause I listened to a lot of audiobooks because I listened to them constantly throughout the day. Um, and my 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 train of thought derailed. I'm fairly certain there were no no survivors. <laughs> Yeah, that... Becky, um, the way it started, oh. the way it started, Becky and I thought it kind of started the same way. We, we, we were like, this, this language is great. I mean, it, it's really well written, but it's a little too flowery. The, the, that's what we thought when, when we both started. You know who the dad in that book reminded me of? I think he's, he's like where all, all of those characters in movies come from. The, uh, the old, the old sailor mm. in Jaws. Who's oh, just sitting yeah, there yeah. spouting yeah. almost nonsense, but it's somehow poetic. Yeah. It's just, just the dad. Yeah. He just goes on and on. It's just 
spouting this amazing, beautiful language. But you're like, what is he talking about? Yeah. Um, but it was funny. I. Uh, we well, gotta wonder did did uh, Ray Bradbury base that character on somebody? Yeah, I wondered that myself. He, he, oh, he, he, he just kept spouting creepy main stuff the whole time. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we were talking on Voxer about it. And, like, one of the first things I said was, I, I've got a really bad feeling about the carnival. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's ready. You, you, get the, you get the irony there. Um, it, was, it was a really good book. It was very good. Once you got used to the language. Yeah. Nobody talks like, talks like that. No, but it was the what? What, what was it but set in? The sixties. The sixties. But, but that it's a, makes a difference. But it's a, um, um, it's a fantasy book. It's a different world. It's a different universe. You know that that kind of that kind of uh, carnival does not exist in this universe. So it is a different universe. So if you can, you know, suspend suspend disbelief, Ray Bradbury is a great writer. Yeah. I love Ray he, Bradbury. Ray Bradbury's a top three writer for me, actually. He, He's he my has third a little, favorite writer. He has a little bit of trouble with women. Reading it from a woman's writing, point of view. He has trouble, a little bit of trouble writing women. But then again, who who didn't back back when this book was written? What men didn't? Most people, most men who were writing women, and especially science fiction and fantasy writers, had trouble. That's a good point. Um, writing writing realistic women, but again, we're we're talking about a different universe. We're talking mm. about a different world. Yeah. Um, so the premise of Something Wicked This Way Comes, if you haven't ever read it, um, is about these two boys. Um, was it Will and Jim? Yeah. Um, they're, it's, it's summer for them. They're, they're early, early teens, I think. Um, and they start seeing these flyers all around town of this circus coming to town. And there's something... Sorry, I'm... Something wicked about the circus, and things just jump the rails from there. This circus just this circus. Ah, this circus just infiltrates their town. Yeah, and let me tell you, there's a causes couple, madness and mayhem. There's a couple of scenes in it that are extremely disturbing. This, this, yeah. this is a horror novel. Yeah. Um, don't let anybody tell you different. It's a fantasy horror novel. Um, I don't think there's any way to get around the idea that it's a horror novel. It starts yeah. building suspense from. Like page one. Mm -hmm. Most people would say, you know, they'd read it and they're like, "Oh, it's just a dark fantasy." No, it is a it's a fantastic horror novel. You have to keep in mind it was written in the sixties, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh. And so it's a book. No, I loved it. Yeah, I, I really I, did. I enjoyed it immensely. It's, it's going to end up being one of my favorite novels probably, and I will read it again. Yeah, and for for all of his dad, the dad's flowery language in this book, he was my favorite character. He was fantastic. He was badass. Yeah, he was. Really was this unassuming little librarian janitor guy, and he is just fantastic. You know, I, I loved what it had to say about libraries. Um, I love that a good part of the book took place in a library. I love libraries, um, and and as you can tell, Ray Bradbury does too. Mm -hmm. Did too, uh, but yeah, we 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 enjoyed it. I think I liked it more than Becky did. For me, it, it's perfect. It's a, it's a 5 out of 5. It's a 4.5 out of 5 for me. Right. I don't think we're given point fives. I demand point fives. All right. It can be a little shooting star. Okay. Half maybe, of a maybe, love letter. Maybe we'll do 10 out of 10 next time then. Let's do that. It's a 7.5. What? <laughs> How's that track? It doesn't. <laughs> I still demand halves. Because okay. I want them. <laughs> but, um, no, I, it, the, the flowery language, the, the, the rambly language really, really bothered me early on. And the fact that I had to get used to it. It took me like 15 pages and I was, I was I, into it. That's about all it took me because I'm used to Ray Bradbury. Not me. It took, it took me a little longer. Yeah. But the fact that I had to get used to it takes it away from being perfect for me. Uh, but it was still fantastic. Yeah. A great, great, great book. book. And I, I actually feel bad I haven't read it before now. Uh, um, I, I, I feel, felt it. bad that I didn't remember it. But I, but I can see why I wouldn't like it when I was younger. Maybe I didn't like it. I, I really don't remember. But I do remember reading it now. Now that I'm reading it, I remember 
remember everything, like or remembered a lot of it. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it would really really uh, speak to a, a very very young audience. No, it's just with the, even with the fathers, the father's language is is allegory although and metaphor. There, although a lot of grade school kids read this book, I mean, it was it was assigned to them, or they got it out of their school library. A lot of them. True, and, but I have to wonder if they got got from it what what adult we as adults got. I don't know. I don't know. Having maybe, maybe having not. life experience, right? Because um, a lot of, a lot of a lot of the things that were talked about in, in all of those prose were again allegory, metaphors, similes as uh, personal stories, right? So yeah. I, I wonder I wonder if 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 it, the the younger generation who reads it got that out of it. You know what I mean? Right. Go. Are we talking about what we're reading right now? Yeah. Okay. So what we're reading now, and then we'll we'll uh, we'll review it next week. So I mentioned in the uh, the live yesterday um, that I'm I'm reading all the Christmas romance because <laughs> yeah I am. Um, it's funny I pretty well maintain Facebook uh, for book recommendations <laughs> because I I'm, I'm constantly getting book recommendations and I'm I I subscribe to. <sighs> Mm -hmm. dozens of, of my favorite indie authors and um, uh, their pages and <clears throat> one series that I have loved for ages is the uh, the, the Zytheline Mates I really hope I'm saying that right it might be Zytheline uh, Mates series by R.L. Olvitt um, <clears throat> they're heavily based in Mayan culture the idea is that centuries upon centuries ago, when when the Mayan uh, the Mayan people were still very much prominent, um, they 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 met aliens, and the aliens took that culture back with them to their world, and the the humans, uh, human human women especially especially took took a place as, as one of their deities. And now, centuries later, they make contact again. And this is this is actually a, a spinoff of the original series. Um, and this smaller series is, is they're holiday romances, and they're all sweet. They're all slice of life. It's about two people uh, actually looking to fall in love, actually looking to find a a, a, a partner in life. And I love that so much. Love it so much. I, I love I love I love a good a good slice of life romance where two people are doing nothing more than building a relationship. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Makes it sense. sounds it sounds it sounds kind of boring sometimes, but it's really not. I eat it up. I love I love every second of it. Although right now the, the heroine is acting silly and I want to smack her and tell her to stop, but that's <laughs> yeah. we're female, what can I say? Anyway, all right. I'm so enjoying it so much. Uh, what I'm reading right now is *The Crack and Wakes* by John Wyndham. Um, I'm reading this. I'm re huh? Release the Kraken. Yeah, I'm reading this um, for *Winter of Wyndham*, put on by uh, Gareth at Book Songs and Other Magic, good, good friend of ours. Gareth's awesome. Got a great channel. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll link him below, and I'll link Bill's books below as well. But yeah, um, The Kraken Wakes is excellent. I'm not going to talk too much about it. I know I love John Wyndham. <clears throat> the Day of the Trip is one of my all-time favorite books. Is it actually about a Kraken? We don't, I don't know yet. I haven't gotten that far. Gotcha. Um, things, are, things are still happening. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so, it, so far so good. I'll talk about it Good things week. happening? Any interesting things happening. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how good they are. It, very interesting. I like that cover. It sort of uh, implies that something just fell out of a big red hole in the sky. Yeah, well, it would make a lot of sense to you if you'd read the first 30 or 40 pages of the book. It makes a big difference. Yeah, but, uh, yeah it makes perfect sense. But, yeah, love it. <clears throat> so far, really, really having a good time with it. As good as um, uh, Day of the Trip, it's probably not. But, yeah, that's what we're reading. That's what we've read in the last few days. Mm -hmm. And... <clears throat> we'll be back next week with another one of these. I'd like to do one of these every week. Okay. 
that's all right with you. I'm here for it. Um, I wanted Let's to do, do this before, but yep. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Yep. This may come out Saturday, or this may come out Wednesday morning. I'm not sure. We're gonna see if I can get this up, get this video up tonight. There's a chance. There's a chance it'll go up. There's a chance it won't. Our internet sucks. So. Because it's windstream. The last video that I did took seven hours or so to upload. So. Oh my God! And this one's half an hour. No, so so was that one. Oh Lord. Okay. Yeah, that one was about thirty-two minutes. Oh, so, I can yeah. do it. Hope. <laughs> yep. That's it. We will see you soon. Actually, Becky's going to buzz and record a video. We'll talk to you in a yeah. little while. Your books are calling. Go read.